Hi everybody, I wanted to do a video about the PUBG Xbox Event Pass, the Sandhawk one, which as I'm recording this video is coming to an end in a few days time. And um, as you can see here, I've got to level 30, but more about that in a bit. Because what I wanted to talk about is, does the Event Pass, does it make you better at PUBG by doing it? <laughs> is it fun? And should you buy the premium version for the next one that we had? So the event pass came out when uh, PUBG came out, release 1.0, uh, a few weeks ago. To kind of also celebrate the release of uh, the Sandhawk map. And the event pass comes in two parts. There's, there's the free version and there's the paid version. Um, in the... What you can see here on the screen, I know it's a bit greyed out, but... The, the, the green line at the top that I'm kind of highlighting now, these are the kind of the, if you get the paid version, these are the rewards you get for doing it. And these are all uh, cosmetics and battle points um, and XP, funnily enough, to take you towards completing the, um, the pass, which is a bit odd. And then the ones you see on the bottom, these, these ones here, these are the ones you get for not paying for the premium version. Also, if you do buy the premium event pass, um, you get a uh, a uh, XP multiplier, so you earn the the points faster as you're playing it. Um, so basically, the the premium the uh, event pass is a way for you to get cosmetic items without having to open random crates. So you pay your seven pounds or whatever it was, and then over the course of a few weeks, you have the ability to earn <laughs> these things. You don't get them automatically. You know you have to earn points. You have to earn XP by doing things. And what those things basically involve are daily missions, a load of missions, uh, specific Sandhawk missions in this case, and then weekly missions that open up. And these all earn you XP that level you up, which means you can then go from level 22 to level 23 and earn those things. Okay, so that's kind of what what's behind it all. Um, and the, the, the beauty of it is that if you're opening cosmetic uh, crates, you know, to get random stuff. It's very difficult to get things. Where this way, you know what you're working towards. And what I particularly wanted was the pan, which I could have got with the free version, to be honest. And I quite liked the uh, parachute as well, that one there, which I thought was quite cool. So, in the excitement of Xbox Release 1.0, I bought the bought the premium pass, as I say, because you don't need to. You can you don't need, you can do the stuff for free as well, and dived in. So, having finished it now, having got to level 30, sort of, and I'll tell you about that in a sec. I wanted to kind of share my thoughts about it. Um, so, the first thing, the good things about the, the the pass and what it's done is, I think what it does is it really helps you vary your gameplay, because it forces you to work uh, play on different um, different maps so if you go through and look at the different um, things you had to do you had to play on Erangel, you had to play on Sandhawk, you had to play on Miramar um, also it made you play on uh, different uh, squads, solos and duo well squads and solos thing, I don't think there was in duo ones you, know, you had to get like a solo chicken dinner you had to get a squad chicken dinner you had to do things that were only uh, available in squad, so like revive teammates or knock enemies. You had to do that sort of thing, so that's good. There's also um, missions that involved using different weapons. So you had to use like the QBZ, you had to use the QBU, you had to use the VSS, um, which is good. And even say driving all that was it week two, where you had to drive all the different vehicles. Um, might have been week one. Drive all the different vehicles in Sandhawk, so you got used to driving the boat and the um, little water scooter thing, and trying to find you as that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> More on that later. Um, so, so that was interesting. It made you behave in different ways as well. You know, you had to get like a melee kill. You had to get pistol kills. Um, you had to be more stealthy. So one of them was not take any damage. I think from in the first half of the game. Um, Others you had to take damage, so you would have to go into the blue and take damage that way. So you were playing more aggressive styles and more stealthy styles. And the, the event pass is a way to make you play more PUBG. Because you pay this money to earn these cosmetics. So you want to earn them, don't you? So, so you'll, you'll play the game more. And playing a game more generally is good. You get better at it, don't you? Well, kind of. And that kind of leads us in to the bad because 
obviously it depends what style you're having to play to earn these points, whether that's going to make you better or worse. Oh, and finally, of course, the, the rewards. You know, the, there's some there's some interesting rewards. You know, uh, the pan being a good one and the parachute and a few of the other things are interesting when you want to put them on for a lot. So let's talk about the bad things about the, the path. So, probably the first and most obvious one is actually, lots of these cosmetics, they're not very good at all. You know, the gun... Um, the gun skins are... I don't want to... Yeah, they're bad, aren't they? I mean, if you could bet, compare them to the gun skins in any other game, say, like Call of Duty or even Battlefield, you know, Battlefield 1, which had probably the most boring gun skins ever, because they were kind of based around semi-reality... Around they are all way better than any of these PUBG ones. Um, the outfits, you know, are terrible. Um, I, I keep thinking, you know, if as a semi-realistic shooter, PUBG, um, why don't they give us lots of different interesting camouflage stuff? You know, we, I don't don't give me a ghillie suit that I can put on, but give me a, you know, a um, a desert 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 themed jacket or a forest themed jacket you know with di the different types of camos that real army people would use so that's good and th the thing that really annoyed me was that lots of these tasks were, were were really weird and i don't think they helped you in your progression in in getting better at the game at all um so you can say something like that so something like get a kill with a headshot using a qbu that is a good task to do so you've got to shoot somebody in the head specifically go out and do it so that that's good but then you had ones like these down here here we go use 50 bandages on sandhawk 50 bandages okay it might have only taken me two games to do that but it involves going around find a load of bandages and basically sitting in the blue and and healing up now you'll notice you say well rob wouldn't you use those bandages over the time you're using the the event pass well no you wouldn't because this is a linked mission so you have to do the one before to open this one and then once you've done that one that opens the next one and so for example the next one is drink 20 energy drinks on sandhawk so all these that are encouraging you to do is run around drink the find the drinks and drink them then move on to the next house okay you're getting better at drinking energy drinks whoopee do but it doesn't help you i think get better at the game um, which is yeah which is a little bit silly i also don't think you've got enough xp for daily performance so if we look at the daily task for for today destroy three helmets do 300 damage in a single game reach top five in squads okay so you could you could do that but there should also be um you know get a chicken dinner 100 points in solos get a chicken dinner in duos get a chicken dinner in squads now they would be very difficult to achieve because you can't always get one of those but if you do, you, know, you should be rewarded for that. Or get in the top. If you get in the top ten when you're playing today, you're going to get so much XP. So it's re rewarding you that way. You know, get a five kill game. Um, that sort of stuff. They should have definitely included that, and that would encourage you to play in ways that would make you better at the game as well. And war mode wasn't included. Now I know war mode didn't come out at the time that. Uh, 1.0 came out, we've only just got it. But they should have included war mode in these as well. They could have added them in. They could have been a war mode section. You know, play a game of war mode. Great. Play five games of war mode. Great. Get three kills in a war mode game. Get five kills in a war mode game. Get a headshot in a war mode game. All these sorts of things they should have put in that encourage you to play that mode. Because, as I was saying in the Hot Droppers podcast, over the first war mode weekend, I didn't play it that much because I was grinding through the event pass and you didn't get many points for playing uh, war mode. And specifically, your kills and your knocks didn't count in war mode towards your event pass XP, which was which was good. You kind of end up playing a lot of the time, well I did anyway, because you think you've got to get your money's worth. You've played your 7 quid, or your $10, whatever it was in America and Canada and the rest of the world, you know, and I'm going to get this stuff. I'm going to play even if I'm not enjoying it. And that's bad. And what that also means is because you're playing not necessarily with the right attitude and you're doing funny things, you can affect your ranking. Now, what luckily at the moment, still on the Xbox, you can change your, your, your server settings. So when I was doing all these tasks, like drinking lots of Red Bulls or going for headshots... Well, as well, using bandages or trying to find vehicles, I would swap over to the North American servers and do it there, so that if I got killed, you know, trying to find a UAZ, you know, by driving around the island on a motorbike ten times, 
it wouldn't affect my ranking in in the EU uh, servers because that kind of one of the reasons why I I like playing PUBG. Um, I like the leveling up. You know, I like thinking, oh, I'm in the top thousand players now, despite the fact that I'm an old bloke who can't shoot straight. I enjoy that. But by doing these things, if you couldn't change your server, that would affect that, and you would go down. Uh, I've kind of mentioned it, but there's, there's too many linked tasks as well, like these ones down here. You know, it should have been... I, I would have been okay with use 50 bandages on Sandhawk if that was one that was open for the entire season. Because, again, that would have encouraged me probably to try bandages more, because the beauty of bandages is, is although they don't heal you very much, they heal you very quickly, a small amount. Um, so, so that would have been good. I would have liked, again, to have tasks featuring maybe lots more different weapons as well. So it should have been, they should have been in the normal one, you know, get two kills with the car 98, um, get three kills with the Vector, get five kills with the DP-28. All these sorts of things should have been in there as well. And I think they could have really encouraged us to, to play in different um, ways. Now, I don't know whether how difficult this would be to implement, but I'm sure they could. So it could have, they could have had things like... Um, um, get two kills within two minutes of landing. So that would encourage you to hot drop, wouldn't it? So get get two kills within, or one minute of landing, so you've got to hit the ground. You know, so imagine when you hit school, you know, you're going to get a kill pretty quick, aren't you? Um, uh, at the other side of that, you could have had, don't fire a gun in the first 15 minutes. So that could be based around, you know, playing stealthily. Um, find a vehicle within like one minute of landing, so that encourages the old D23E strategy. They could also do them geographically on the map, so it could be something like um, play the centre circle on all of the circles in a map. You know, so that means you've got to be within 25% of the centre of of each circle within I don't know two minutes of them appearing. So as soon as the first circle appears, you've got two minutes to get to the centre of that circle when the next one appears. And more similarly, it could be play the edge. You know, don't move further away than 25% of the distance from the edge for each circle. They could have done stuff like that, making us use different play styles. So overall, I think that the biggest problem I had with the event pass was that it was a, a lot of it was a grind, but it wasn't a fun grind. But I'm okay with grinds not being fun because grinds often make you better through repetition and practice. But lots of the tasks weren't revol revolving around making you better at the game in general. And that kind of made me feel like, oh, God. And that's why yesterday I got to level 27. I was about halfway through and there was five days to go, or six days to go, and the event passed. And I was like, I looked at the daily missions and I was like, Okay, so if I do all the daily missions, you know, I'm going to get that. I can get to level 30. I could do the, the uh, that you get daily XP for playing the game. Uh, and there was a few of these that I still got to get, like three players with handguns. I could do that one by dropping hot, couldn't I? Kill using a me melee weapon, I could do that one. Kill a player using a pan, maybe. If I did some squads, I could have knocked down enemies 50 times. I could have done that one. Um, get revived by teammate, and revive teammates at least three times in a single game. Do I really want to do that one? <sighs> I mean, you can cheat, can't you, by shooting each other? Um, but I thought, no, I, I just can't be bothered to do this anywhere anymore. So I went to the shop, and I paid my... Um, in fact, I can go back and show you what I did. Because if you go to the store, you can go to the shop, and you can buy uh, G-Coin. So I bought 1,100 G-Coin. And then I use that to buy, uh, is it here? Can't see it. It doesn't look like, maybe it's disappeared, but you can buy a level boost. So you spend 500 G coin and it boosts your event pass by five levels, which meant that I had completed the event pass. And I got my lovely pan and I was done with it. And then what happened this morning was Bluehole announced that actually, if you log in today and tomorrow, you get 400 XP each day anyway, <laughs> for free. <laughs> oh, so I would have I would have finished it anyway without having to pay any money and without kind of feel, feeling a little bit guilty and a little bit dirty that I paid some money to finish it. Because whenever I see that pan now as I'm running around, I'll be thinking, 
you paid a little bit of extra to get that. You didn't earn it, you know, the complete way. So anyway, so my advice would be with the event pass, with the premium event pass, the one you've got to buy. I mean, by all means, you know, when, when it's free, you, you can work through it. Well, you get them automatically. I, w I would say don't work through the mundane tasks. Just don't do them. Just play PUBG, play Battle Royale, play Sandhawk, play whatever maps you like, play War Mode, and they will make you better. Definitely, next time, I am not buying the premium event pass because it wasn't fun, and I don't think it made me any better at playing PUBG because the majority of the tasks were mundane fetch quests, basically, that didn't improve my skills. So there we go. PUBG's premium event pass. Don't buy it unless they make significant changes into the way we earn the XP to earn the admittedly rather rubbish cosmetics. There we go. So anyway, put your questions and comments down below. What you think about the event pass, whether you bought it, whether you didn't, whether you achieved it, whether you're going to buy the next one. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Thank you very much. And of course, I will see you again soon.